Good morning, church. You know, this week, when I got the news about, about Larry, of course, it broke my heart. But it made me just think how valuable each person is in my life all over again. Because you never know when it's the last time you're going to say bye to someone. And it's so easy for us to take each other for granted, take our wives, our kids, our families, your brothers and sisters for granted. But it might be the last time. And I thought about it. And on Wednesday would be the last time that he would serve in the church. He was busy serving. But I thought to myself, if I could have just known that he had less than 24 hours to live, I would have brought him to my office and I would have told him, Larry, I love you so much. Thank you for serving. Thank you for giving your heart. Thank you for being so fun and loving. I just want to let you know, Larry, I really, really, really appreciate you. But the sad thing is, not always do we get those opportunities. This is a moment for us to kind of just slow down. And maybe today, we need to share thoughts like that. And say, I thank you. I I love you. You're important. You matter to me. I see what you do. It's not unnoticed. And if we did that more often, we'd have better relationships. And I tell you, we'd be way more fulfilled. And we'd have a lot less regrets. I, I, I know Larry. I talk to Larry every morning when I come in to Sunday morning service and Wednesday nights. And he would be here. I get here sometimes 3 o'clock in the morning. And he'd be here. And he'd make sure I get some tea. And then he would talk to me about life. And, and he'd say something like this. I'm ready to preach my next sermon. When can I preach? He had like three or four sermons that he already lined up, ready to preach. I go, all right, we got to talk to the team, and and we're going to have you preach. And he didn't get to preach those sermons, but I may, maybe even right now he's preaching through us. And, and I know in heaven, he probably told Jesus, can I preach? And Jesus said, go ahead. I gave you that message. <laughs> maybe he preached his first sermon in heaven. But um, I want to let you know we love you, and. This is all about relationships. It's all about love. It's all about God. And, and I appreciate every one of you guys. Every one of you is so important. None of you are a mistake. You're not an accident. You're wonderful. You got, God has a wonderful plan for your life. And it doesn't matter how many times you fail. We serve a God that takes our failures and restores us and establishes us. And he said, you qualify for my best. I'm going to pray and then we'll continue our, our, our series that we're going to be talking about growth today. And God wants you to grow from wherever you're at. There's another level of improvement. There's a lo- another level of growth. And God wants and his plan for you is to develop. And in your developing, this is what's going to happen. You're going to become more like Christ. You're going to become happier. You're going to become more fulfilled. You're going to become more powerful. You are still not everything that God has created you to be. Are you ready to grow this? Come on. Are you ready to grow into that? Father, we just thank you. I thank you for Larry and all the time that he served in our church and for being a wonderful brother. He was definitely my brother and we had a lot of laughs and good times. And I thank you, Lord, because of your son, Jesus Christ, Larry, a next gangbanger in Compton, is now in heaven saved, born again, Father God, and living for eternity. And we thank you for that. Bless this sermon. Use me, Lord, to teach it, Lord, that we'll all learn and apply the scripture and see it transform our lives and see the good results that you desire for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Today we're going to be talking about three laws of growth. Can you say growth with me? There's a quote that I saw and it said this, only through the process of growing 
will we arrive at our potential. Only through growing will you arrive at your potential. That could be in anything. Um, it could be in sports. It could be in business. It could be your spiritual life. It could be your marriage. Uh, you only arrive at your full potential if you keep on growing. The moment you stop growing is a moment you stop moving towards your potential. There's, there are many people that die and they never arrived at their potential. Life distracted them, they put it off, they procrastinated, or maybe they didn't put in the effort to grow. There's another growth statement that I read and it says, growth is the great separator between those who succeed and those who do not. When I see a person beginning to separate themselves from the pack, it's almost always due to personal growth. God did not create it to be average. And what we're saying is that when we're separated from the pack as we're growing, it's not that we're better, it's we're moving towards our potential so we can help more people. There's someone that has to be able to say, I'm ready to separate from the pack so I can help the pack. Help my family, help my church. I want you to know this, that God wants you and me to grow. And he's given us laws and principles that guarantee the growth he desires for us. He's given us laws and principles that if we abide by them, will guarantee the growth that he desires for us. In Jeremiah 29, 6, it says this, I want your numbers to grow, not to get smaller. It's good for you to know that God doesn't have decrease his vision for your life is not decreased. His vision for your church is increased. His vision for your business is increased. His vision for your finances is increased. His vision for your love is to increase. His vision for your family is to increase. He, he's saying this, I have visions for you to grow and become larger and bigger, not smaller. So what is a law? It's a spiritual principle, command, or instruction, a teaching that is established to protect and guarantee maximum performance and growth. So God gives us his principles. He gives us his instructions to protect us and to maximize our growth and maximize our lives. This is what we do um, when this is what the enemy wants to do with our lives. He wants to minimize our lives. The Bible says that the devil's out to kill, steal, and destroy. And how he does it is through permission. God gives us parameters, he gives us boundaries, he gives us instructions, and then we decide we want to do it our way. Now, you could do it your way, but this is what happens. When you do it your way, you're out of the protection. When you do it your way, this is what's not going to happen. You're not going to maximize your life, and this is what's not going to happen. You will not see growth. But when we start living under the parameters and the boundaries of God, God has boundaries and instructions for marriage. One of the instructions that he has is be faithful. Be faithful to your husband. Be faithful to your wife. He has other principles to live by that guarantee our protection and guarantee our maximization. One of them is forgive those who trespass against you. This is very important. If you, if you say, no, I, don't, I want to abide by that law, by that principle, you will not be protected. The Bible says, do not let the sun go down upon your wrath. Do not give place to the devil. Actually, when we're unforgiven, we're allowing the devil to kill, steal, and destroy our lives. And if there's been unfaithfulness in your marriage, it's not the end of your marriage. Someone might need to forgive in that marriage. And someone might, might have to repent and say, I'm done doing things my way. And it doesn't matter how bad things have become. All you need to do, this word is not to condemn you. This word is to get you back on track. God wants you to grow. He still has a great plan for your life. But you got to make up your mind. This day, something's going to shift. This day, I'm going to start living by the laws and principles of God. And if you do that, I guarantee you this, you will, re you will arrive at maximum performance and your life and marriage and everything you touch will grow. So let's talk about laws. Law number one is intentionality. It says that you will only grow in areas that you choose to grow in. Growth is a choice. Say with me. We must choose to keep growing and improving every day. It's a choice. Growth is a command that takes intentional effort. If I'm going to grow, I want you to get this spiritually. If I'm going to grow intellectually, if I'm going to grow in skill, in any area I want to grow in, it's not just going to happen by accident. It's not just going to happen as you live. There's a growth myth, and this is it. Growth happens naturally. 
whether we work for it or not, it will just happen. It's kind of like, que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. And it's not true. Spiritual growth, and if you want to grow in any area of your life, and you can grow in many areas, you're going to have to make up your mind. I want to grow in this area. In 1 Peter 1.5, it says, God has done all this to help you. This is what the scripture is saying. I, I've given my son, I fill you with my spirit, I've given you my word, I've done ever, I've given you my promises, I've gifted you, everything I've done is to help you. So now, you who believe in Christ, you that believe in Jesus Christ, you must grow as believers. If you're in this room and you're not a believer quite yet, it's time to become a believer. Because when you become a believer, this is what happens. When you become a believer, you will receive the gift of eternal life. When you become a believer, you, be, you, you get set free from your addictions. When you become a believer, you can say this, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. When you become a believer, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. When you become a believer, your heart gets filled with his love. When you become a believer, you can finally fulfill your purpose in life. When you become a believer, you finally are going to experience the rich and satisfying life that you're looking for. It's only going to become, it's only going to happen when you become a believer. When you become a believer, it doesn't matter what's been broken down. It can be restored because we serve a God that restores broken hearts, heals broken hearts. When you become a believer, you can walk You can walk in your valley, but it's not going to keep you down. You could walk through that valley, come out the other side because the Lord is with you. When you become a believer, there's a breakthrough. Come on, in every single circumstance. When you become a believer, there's nothing that's impossible with Christ that's with you and for you. Let's give God some praise. Let's become some believers. Now it says, you as believers, you must grow as believers. It's, it's a command. You must grow as believers. It's instruction. It's literally telling us, if you don't make a decision to grow, you won't. And this is what it says. Try very much, make every effort, do everything you can to grow or you won't. You being here is not to check in your card and say, I'm just clocking in on Sunday morning. We're not here to clock in. We are here to learn. We are here to grow, to become more like Jesus Christ. We haven't seen nothing yet. The best is yet to come. The best you, you haven't even seen yet. It's time for you to come here like a student and say, I'm here to learn. I'm here to grow. And I guarantee you this, I will not be the same person I was last year because every day I'm growing and every day I'm improving and I'm I'm doing everything I can to grow. Make every effort. We have holy wars classes. Make every effort. We have baptism. Make every effort. We have the growth conference. Make every effort. You will not grow unless you're really making a decision that I will do everything I can to grow. And look what the scripture says. Try very, very much. Make every effort to do always what is good. Then you should grow to know God more and more. You will not know God more and more unless you make an effort to, to know God more and more. That means I know God more because I make an effort to grow, know God more. That's why you're here today, because you're making an effort to know God more. That's why you open up your Bible, not just on Sunday morning or reading it on the screen. You actually read it during the week because you want to get to know God more and more. That's why now some of you are starting to listen to some Christian music. Because you know all the groups you used to listen to. As a matter of fact, you know their songs so well that you could do karaoke with them. But it's time for you to know some new songs. It's time for, it's time for you to make, make realize that your spirit has to grow. And while you're singing some worship songs, this is what happens. You create an atmosphere where God's presence invades your room, invades your life. And you can say, after that song I listened to, it changed my life because I know Jesus better now. That's why 
You do what you do, and you read the books, and you do everything you can to know Scripture better because you want to know God more. That's why you pray. But it also says that is not all. Then you should learn to control yourselves properly. That's interesting. You should learn how to have self-control. Now, when you gave your life to Jesus, God filled you with the Spirit, His Spirit, it's not a junior spirit. It's the spirit of Jesus. And this is what he's saying. I've given you my spirit so you could live like me. That means it's time for us to stop blaming everybody for making us angry. You know why I cussed you out? Because you're stupid. It's your fault. This is not practicing self-control. You're just blaming yourself. Understand if you're getting out of control... If you're addicted to alcohol and drugs and, and, you, and, and it just takes control over your life, if you're mostly up and down, understand you're not under control. It's time for me and you to make up our minds that we're going to get our bodies under control. We're going to get our desires and appetites under control. Come on. We're going to get our emotions under control, under the control of God. I will no longer let someone make me angry, make me upset, make me bitter, make me leave, make me give up, make me quit. You can't do that because you're not in control of my life. You're not in control of my decisions. You're not in control of my future. I control myself. I control my attitude. I control my body. I'm not no animal. I've been created to be like Jesus Christ. I can control my instincts. Right? Amen. Who is ruining your life? Stop letting them ruin your life. And you should live in a way that pleases God. We can work in that. You should only, you should, oh, no, no. You should learn to be patient. Oh, there we go. It's saying that we can learn or grow in patience. You should be patient with your wife, even though she takes two hours to get ready for church. Right? And you shouldn't be honking the horn. Right? I know. You should probably take that time and just read the Bible. You shouldn't be telling her, if it was going to take that long, you should have woke up at 5 o'clock in the morning. You're still not ready? How do I know this stuff? <laughs> because I got a beauty queen at home. I've blown the horn a lot of days. <laughs> And I've not been reading the Bible. <laughs> How many know we need to grow in patience? Do you know sometimes you got to pay, not, not just be patient, you got to wait with the right attitude. Some of us can't even handle if they, they take too long at McDonald's. Like what kind of McDonald's is this? I thought it was fast food. It sounds like slow food. <laughs> right? And then at the end, after they give you the food and you've been complaining in the lobby, man, this is the slowest McDonald's I've ever seen. And they say, um, by the way, um, can you come? Uh, I got a card for you. Would you come to church with us tonight? After they heard all that complaint, it's time for us to be patient. It's time for us to get our attitudes in check. It's time to get our mouth in order. You got to stop allowing all kinds of negative, doubtful things, complaining, come out of your mouth. It's time for you to get, me and you, to get control over our mouth. It's time to grow. And when we grow, it's a good thing. All growth, understand this, depends on activity. There is no development physically, intellectually, spiritually without effort, and effort means work. Calvin Coolidge said that, our 30th president. In the 20s, there are many areas that we can grow in, but we won't grow in them unless we're intentional. We can grow emotionally, intellectually, in our education, in our skill, in our relationships, Spiritually, physically, in our health, financially, career, business, in the value that we bring to others, our faith, in our love for God and others. There's a lot of areas that we can grow in, but you'll never grow in an area that you have not intentionally made a decision to grow in that area. Of course, 
as you guys could see, I joined the gym. I'm standing a little stronger. I've been there like three times already. I, was, I know. Some of you are saying, man, you're looking a lot buffer than I've seen. My pastor is not only buff spiritually, he's buff physically. No, I'm just kidding. That's in the future one day. But the idea, there's no way I'm going to grow physically without getting myself to that gym. While I'm there, I'm working out and also, I'm also witnessing. I met some friends over there and four of the guys said they were coming. To, I don't know if they made it today. But they said they were coming to church and, and I'm going to keep on inviting them. I talked to them about the Lord and that was because I'm intentional about reaching people for Jesus. And, and I probably, every day I go in there, I talk to somebody about the Lord. Last time I went in before that, I spent 40 minutes talking to someone and 10 minutes working out. But after I was done, I go, I'm out. No one could say, I didn't show up. But God comes first. <laughs> but you will grow in areas that you intend to grow in. That means if you want your marriage to grow, you can. It's not time for you to go. It's time for you to grow. Could it be that you're not growing because you got fantasies about leaving and you're talking about divorce and you're talking about separation where God is saying the struggles that you're in right now are not meant to chase you away. The struggles that you're in and the struggle, the challenges that you're facing, they're there to challenge you to grow emotionally, grow in your attitude. See, understand this. If you don't grow, you can go, but you're going to go with the same mess you, you're leaving with. Because everywhere you go, there you'll be. So it's time for us to realize I need to start growing in every area of my life and stop quitting and stop running. And Second Peter, this is great. One A says, you should continue to grow as believers in all these ways. Isn't it good that God is saying, I just don't want you to grow in some ways. I want you to grow in all the ways. I want your relationships to grow. I want you to grow emotionally. I want you to grow physically. I want you to grow financially. I want you to grow in, in intellectually. I want you to grow in wisdom. I want you to grow in skill in all these ways. Then it will show. Your growth will show that you really know our Lord Jesus. Because when you really know Jesus and you're following Jesus, this is, the, this is, this is what happens. You don't remain the same. You grow. People see where you were, and now they see the growth. And the growth causes people to recognize that Jesus is real, that Jesus works. They knew you when you had the bad attitude. They see your attitude getting better. They knew you when you were a womanizer, and now they're seeing you faithful. They knew you when you were addicted, angry, and upset, and now they're seeing you kind and loving. They're saying, what is going on with you? And you're going to be saying, I know Jesus. I'm growing every single day, and you have not seen anything yet because every day I'm improving, and every day I'm growing. Look what it says. Then you will show that you really know Jesus Christ. People will see that your life has good results. That means following Jesus and growing in him should produce what? Good results. That, do you know there's some people that you will not reach with your mouth, you're going to reach with your lifestyle? Your kids have to see the growth in you. Before they accept the God in you. I want you to accept Jesus. And they're like, it don't look like it's working for you. I don't see nothing good coming out of all this church stuff you're doing. You still got, you still cussed at, at dad. You guys fight like cats and dogs. You still have not overcome your depression. You're still angry. You're still unforgiving. You're still a gossiper. You're still an alcoholic. You're still impatient. You're still crazy. You're still a Christian gangbanger. <laughs> what, 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 you see, what they're saying is, I don't see no change. I do not see growth. Stop trying to witness to people about how good God is if you don't let him lead you 
to your next level of growth. I'm not saying keep your mouth shut. I'm just letting you know that sometimes you're going to reach people when they see the good results in you. After you know Jesus. They start saying, I know that's not you. The way you talk now is not you. The way you smile now is not you. The way you're keeping that job now is not you. There's something different about you. The patience that you're walking, that's different. I'm seeing growth in your life. Wow, what happened to you? And you're going to be able to say, I'm telling you what happened to me. I made a decision to follow Jesus, and that was just the first step. Every day I'm studying his word. Every day I'm applying it. I'm exercising this thing. And every day I'm growing in every area I've decided to grow in. You know what that means? Every area you should decide to grow in. There shouldn't be an area that you've not decided to grow in. If it's part of your life, you should grow in that area. Let's not do this. Be Christian, Christian heroes at church and at home. There's no, there's no sign that God's supernatural power is on your life. And let's not do this. Be superheroes at your job which is, you should be, be a superhero, be the hardest worker over there, but be careful that you're not the hardest worker, you show up early, you leave late, and when it comes to church, you barely show up. What he's saying is grow in church, grow in your spirituality, grow in your marriage, grow in your career, grow in your finances, all of it needs to grow, and that will give glory to God. Amen. Law number two, law of utilization, says that you will grow in the gifts and talents and skills that you utilize to the best of your ability. Being gifted and talented or having great potential is not enough. We must develop and use what God has given us. So God's giving you talent. Stop underestimating what you got. You're not in competition with anybody. You're only in competition with your present self to become a better version of you. You need to make sure that you take an analysis. You might not have the gifts that someone else has. Like my daughter, she could sing. I could barely sing. My daughters could all sing, but I ain't worrying about that. Because I, I'm just going to work with what I got. God's not telling me better develop that gift of singing. He's not telling me they need to develop the gift of singing. You need to develop the gift that God has given you. Right? And you know what the scripture says here in 1 Peter 4.10. Each of you has received a gift, a spiritual talent, spiritual ability. Use it to serve others. So God's giving you a gift to use. God's giving you a gift to use. He didn't say give a, get, get a gift and hoard it. He's saying use it for me. Use it to serve others. Use it to serve God. Use it to bless others. Use it to benefit those who are hurting and broken. In Romans 12, 6, it says, in his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. There are things that you can do well. Some of you are good at administrative things. Some of you are good at accounting. Some of us are, 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 are good at, at physical things and fixing things. Some of us are good at speaking and teaching. But whatever you're skilled at, work it. And look what it says here. God has given us special gifts to do certain things well. If God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as you, God has given you. If your gift is serving, like Larry, serve them well. He served us well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. It, it is, it is a, if, if it is given, give generously. If God has given you the leadership ability, take your responsibility seriously. If if you have a gift of showing kindness to others, do it gladly. But we could also say, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Whatever God has given you, use it. I remember I knew that God called me to speak and be a pastor, uh, but I did have stage fright. I was scared to speak in public. I, I remember being at Cal State San Bernardino, and they told me that, it, that uh uh, we had to have a, do a speech in front of the whole class. You know what I did? I dropped out of that class. And then my friend, he knew I was a Christian, and he invited me to his, his youth conference, 
and I'm their guest speaker. They're, got, they're super excited about having me, and I'm freaked out. And I remember I, I just said yes, and I did. I showed up, and I, I prayed. I did everything I could. When I got on that, that behind the, behind, uh, on the stage, behind the pulpit, this is what happened to me. I, I freaked out. My mind went blank. I didn't have nothing to say. I was not flowing. I was fear, more fearful than, than having any type of faith. I'm going to look like a fool. 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 I look like a fool. Wait, I, spe- I stopped speaking in five minutes because I ran out of things to say. Five minutes. Pastor Marco. And this is what happened. I just, I, this is how I ended the speech or the speaking or the teaching. I don't even know it was a teaching. I don't know what I said. I don't think I said anything. I said, that's it. That's how I ended it. And I sat down. And I remember sat down on the front row. My friend goes, all righty then. He just got up there trying to cover up all the, like, a, there's a great speaker right here. But you know what I did? And when the opportunity came up again, I utilized my gift. I utilized my gift. I utilized my gift. I utilized my gift. And I started developing the gift. There was something in me that God put in me. There's something in you that God has put in you. Stop downplaying where you're at now because you're not fully developed quite yet. But you'll never get developed unless you start using the gift that God has given you to help somebody. The gift is not for you. The gift is for somebody that's hurting and broken. We got to get over our church hurt. We got to get over our fears. We got to get over our procrastination and not let the devil have his way. God has put something special in you and the gift that you have is not just any gift. It's the gift of Jesus. It's the spirit of Jesus. It's the same giftings that Jesus had when he walked on the earth. Jesus still wants to heal people. Jesus still wants to set people free. Jesus still wants to love people. Jesus still wants to feed the 5,000. Jesus still wants to set people free, but he's doing it now through you and I. He fills us with his spirit. He gives us with his gifts, and if we use them, they're not natural gifts. They're spiritual gifts, but they must be developed. Do you know the Bible says that Jesus grew? The Bible says he grew. Of course he grew. He's a baby first. Well, the Bible says he grew physically, but he also grew spiritually. The Bible says he grew in favor with men and God. So it wasn't just a physical growth. It was a spiritual growth. The Bible says when he was 12 years old, he was in church. He wasn't doing what most 12-year-olds were doing. He was in church. And the mentors were there. The teachers were there. And he started asking questions. There was one day that Jesus' parents, Mary and Joseph, lost Jesus. Imagine losing Jesus. Like that's really bad parenting. Back in, back in those days, they didn't have CPS, so no one could call on them. Imagine CPS, you, you, mean, you lost Jesus. You were miles away. Did you even know where he was? No, no, you didn't. They backtracked and they found him. And you know where they found him? They found him in church. And this is what he was doing. He was asking the leaders questions about the Bible. Even at 12 years old, he was beginning to exercise his gift to preach and know the Word of God. Some of us right now, you could be here for another 10 years, but until you make up your mind, I'm going to grow spiritually, this is what's going to happen. 10 years are coming, and either you're going to be ready, or you're going to grow, or you're not. You don't want to be in the place that 10 years from now, you didn't grow in your marriage, you didn't grow in your relationships, you didn't grow in your relationships. You didn't grow intellectually. You didn't grow in skill. You didn't grow in your career. You didn't grow financially. You need to grow in every single one of these areas because God has a vision for you to grow in those areas. Because when people see the good results with God in your life, it's going to be a witness that God works. It's okay to have challenges. And you should be facing different challenges. But you shouldn't be facing the same challenge that you're facing now, 10 years from now. That challenge is not meant to stay in your life. It's meant to be overcome and add to your testimony and add to your witness and add to your story. There's no challenge that you face. God says, I'll never give you more than you can handle. The trouble that you're in, the challenges that you're facing are not meant to destroy you. They're meant to school you. I'm going to learn. I'm going to grow. Challenge, I challenge you. 
There's one thing for sure. I'm not quitting. I'm not giving up. And I've made up my mind that this challenge and this trial and this difficulty will be my school of learning. This test will turn into a testimony. I'm excited about my future. I am growing intentionally. I'm going to utilize what God has given me. I want you to get this. The gifts and talents that we use will grow, increase, and develop the ones you use. In Matthew 25, 16, it says, the one who had received five talents immediately went out, invested it, and earned another five. So the one that had five talents invested it and got five. So when you use what God has given you, it grows and multiplies. But the, the opposite is true. The gifts and talents that we don't use will not grow, and we will eventually lose. I remember one day I was at Sequoia Junior High in Fontana, and it was P.E., and they're, we were playing volleyball, and P.E., they made us play volleyball. And I jumped up, and when I landed, I fell in the big crack that they had in the, in the blacktop. I twisted my ankle and broke it. The next day I showed up to school, they had the whole school blacktop. They fixed every hole. They didn't want to get sued. I wasn't going to sue them, but I broke my leg, but I had that cast on my leg. And when they took that cast off my leg, my legs were already skinny. I I'll tell you this. When I was in junior high, I weighed 85 pounds. I was a real skinny kid. I used to put on like two sweats over my pants. But this was a crazy thing. When I took off that, that cast, I had chicken legs already, already. But by the time they were done, I had little pegs, skinny like this. And I go, that is so embarrassing. I had one small leg and another one that was smaller and skinnier with no muscle. So why did it have no muscle? I'll tell you why it had no muscle, because I wasn't using it. Some of you right now aren't getting stronger because you're not using what God has given you. Stop complaining about what you don't have and start working with what you do have. Exercise your faith. Exercise your gift. Not only did it get look weaker, it was weaker. I had to learn how to walk on it. I had to learn how to build muscle again. What you don't use, you lose. In Matthew 25, 29 it says, For to everyone who has, who has and values his blessings and gifts from God, values his blessings and gifts from God, and has used them wisely, more will be given. Are you using wisely the gifts and talents that God has given you to serve him and serve others? You will be held accountable one day, and there will be a day of reckoning. Did you invest your life or just waste it selfishly on your desires and your pleasures and your life and act, that God, act like God brought you into this world and saved you for you to sit and consume? Now, we're not here to consume. We're here to, of course, we're here to learn. We're here to grow. But we're here to get it. And we're here to give it. We're here to use the gift that God has given us. And there's something great in you. Stop underestimating who you are. God, and there, you could tell. You, you know, man, there's something bigger in me. I haven't seen it yet. And God is saying, I'm going to develop that gift. And you're going to reach your potential. But this is how you're going to do it. You're going to use the gifts that you have now. You're going to grow them. It says, but... For to everyone who has and values his blessings and gifts from God and has used them wisely, and has used them wisely, more will be given. The back part of the scripture. But from the one who does not have, because he has ignored or disregarded his blessings and gifts from God, even, when he do, even what he does have will be taken away from him. What he has will be taken away from him. There's a story about codfish back east. They, they would try to, the, the codfish are found in the northeast part of the United States of America, and they would try to get them over to California or the west coast, but they had problems. A number of years back, the codfish industry on the northeast coast of the U.S. had a problem. The fresher the fish, the better. So how could they keep the codfish fresh while they transported them from across the country? When they froze the fish, they lost too much flavor. When they transported, transported them in tanks filled with salt water, the fish got soft and mushy. Finally, they found a solution. They placed catfish in the tanks. Catfish are a natural enemy 
of codfish. So the catfish would chase them around the tanks all the time they were being transported. The cod now arrived in better conditions than ever. See, the moral of the story is we all need some catfish in our lives. The difficult people and situations in life, they may not be pleasant, but they keep us praying, they keep us healthy, and they keep us growing, and they build our muscle. There's some of us right now that God is saying, I'm not done with you, and he says some catfish into your life. And you're wondering, what is going on? And God is saying, I'm just trying to wake you up. There's a giant in you. There's a call on you, and you need to start using what I've given you, and I need to get you out of your comfort zone so you can get into the growth zone. Right? Law number three, the law of preparation. It says this, that the only way to participate in future opportunities is to grow in preparation. That means, this is all it means. Growth is all about preparing for life opportunities. We can only participate in the opportunities that we're prepared for. We could participate in the opportunities we're prepared for. Many are going to miss the greatest opportunity in all the world. That's eternal life. Uh, truth, Jesus coming back. And only the prepared will be saved and live with him for eternity. There are people here prepared spiritually. And there's others that are not prepared spiritually. If today were your last day on earth, you would not be prepared to meet your maker. In Matthew 24, 44 it says, so too, Jesus said this, you also must be prepared. For at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. Jesus saying, there's going to be a day. I came once, but I promise you I'm coming back again. And I'm not coming, I'm not coming to save the world. I'm coming to take my people home. And those that are prepared will be caught up in the air with him. And those who are not prepared, prepared will be left behind. There's another problem, that if you die without Christ, there's no makeovers. The opportunity, just like Larry. Larry did not know he was just washing his car. He had heart, he had pain in his chest. He went inside the, inside the house. His wife called the ambulance. They picked him up and he died in the ambulance. He did not know that while washing his car, he would breathe his last breath. But the good news is, Larry was prepared for his death. He claimed Jesus as his Lord and Savior and served him with his whole life. Today we could say Larry's in heaven because he prepared while he had breath in his lungs. This is your opportunity to get prepared for your future. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. Today's the day to get prepared. There's one more thing I want to say. To grow in preparedness takes foresight and hard work. This, the idea is you're preparing for something. Those who grow in preparation see beyond this moment. They can see the price of not being prepared. They can see their future. If I'm not prepared, this could happen to me. This could happen to my family. This could happen to my business. This could happen, to, this could happen if I'm not prepared. There's a price for not being prepared. But there's also a price for being prepared. It's not that you see the price of not being prepared, but also you can see the future opportunities that will be able, you'll be able to participate in if you pay the price to get prepared. Opportunities are all around us, but only the prepared can walk in them and participate in them. There's a scripture in the Bible that talks about ants, and ants prepare for the winter. You don't see ants in the winter. They only come out in spring and summertime. In the winter, they're underground. And you're saying, what are they eating? Well, look at this. In Proverbs 6, 7, it says, without a leader, administrator, or ruler, it, prepare, it, this ant, it prepares its provisions in the summer for the future. It makes sure that there's no lack in the winter. It gathers its food during harvest. And then it says, how long will you stay in bed, you slacker? When will you get up from your sleep and get back to work? He's saying, your future is coming, whether you're slacking or not. But when your future comes and you're not prepared for it, this is what's going to happen in your future. There will be lack. And this is what also will be in your future. Closed doors that you can't walk in because you're not prepared. Today's the day to get prepared for your future. 
And God is saying there's provision in your future if you're prepared. There's opportunities in your future if you're prepared. The doors are open for the prepared and they remain shut for the unprepared. I remember when we went on our, on our missionary trip and this is what happened. A lady on the plane died on the way to Africa. It was an eight hour plane ride and over the intercom, I hear desperately a stewardess say this, we need a doctor, we need a doctor, we need a doctor. They weren't saying they needed anybody else because they had a medical emergency. Well, thank God we had a doctor on our missionary team. And we were going to do a medical outreach. Dr. Bridget Willis, she goes to our church and she... We're, and so she gets up and goes to the front of the plane and she resuscitates that woman. Gets her back, gets her back to breathing. She stayed with her the whole flight. There was an opportunity to help someone, but the only the prepared can help them. There's going to be people that are going to depend on your preparedness. They're going to need freedom. They're going to need counseling. They're going to need encouraging. They're going to need healing. They're going to need the good news. And when those opportunities present themselves to you, are you going to be prepared to speak into their lives? We see that the disciples one day had an opportunity with a man that had a demon-possessed kid. And the man brought his, their child. He was so demon-possessed that the demon would take over and throw their son into the fire and throw him into the water, trying to get his son to kill himself. It was a demon of death and suicide and destruction. So they brought the man, they brought the young boy to the disciples, and they were trying to cast out the demon, and they couldn't. So now the guy's desperate, and he comes to Jesus, Jesus, I brought my son to, for, for them to set my son free, and they couldn't heal him. And then Jesus looked and says, they just don't have faith. And then he said, and he said this, come out. And the demon came out. The man was made whole. Then the disciples said, why couldn't we cast it out? And the answer was, you weren't prepared. You didn't have enough faith. You weren't prayed up. You weren't fasted up. And that's why you couldn't help that person. Do you understand that someone's life might be at stake? Someone's eternity is dependent on your preparedness. It's time for me to realize this is more than just me. I got to be intentional about growth. People need to see the growth in my life and the good results. People need to see me utilizing the gifts and talents that God has given me to bless others. And people need to see me prepared so when they come, I'm I'm ready to help them. You might not be a doctor, but you are a believer and you're full of God's spirit and God is saying, I've gifted you because I'm still working today and I'm working through you. Let's give God some praise. Come on. It's time to grow. Let's all stand up. I'm going to dismiss in a second. No one else leave. I, how many are ready to grow? This is what you need to do. Do everything you can. Make every effort to grow. We have a growth conference that God has given us and trusted us with as a church. It's his growth conference. But I believe that God's using this conference to prepare us for where we're headed. What God does, he sets up meetings to prepare for the future. When you show up to those meetings, like the upper room, one day Jesus told him, go in the upper room and you're going to be baptized in the Holy Spirit so you could be a witness throughout the whole world. What he was saying, you're going to be a witness, but you can't do it without, my, but by, without being prepared and empowered. That's what's going to happen on this growth conference. We're bringing some of the biggest influencers, men of God, that are doing big things all over the world. They're not prideful, thinking they're doing big things, but God is using them in a great way because they've been developing and using what God has given them. And now they're coming here to impart to us. They understand, they turn down more engagements that they accept. Because they're very, very busy. But this church, they're called to. They love our church. And this is what we're saying. They're traveling from, from you know, Washington, from back east. And they're coming here to impart into us 
All I'm asking you as a pastor, do everything you can to grow so you can grow. You're never going to grow without being intentional. You're never going to grow without showing up. I've learned this. How can you grow if you don't even show up to class? That means you got to show up to class. There's going to be a time of instruction. There's going to be a time of impartation. There's going to be a time of growth. I guarantee this. You show up, you're going to spiritually grow. And when you spiritually grow, you're going to qualify for the miracles, qualify for the ministry, and qualify for the opportunities that God has for you. There's next level life. But you're going to have to have next level preparedness. You're going to have to get here. So get your ticket before they all sell out. I'm telling you, before they all sell out, get your ticket. We want this place full of every one of us receiving what God has for us. How many believe if God's ready to do something in our church that's going to reach the whole world and preparing us for it, it's time for us to get ready. And before we leave this place, I want to give an opportunity. I'm going to tell you this. I love you. and I, I love Larry. And, and one day I'm going to see him again and my mama. I, I still got, the other day I was going through my phone and I'm not going to erase my mom's number. I'm not. But then I realized that she called me and she left a voicemail that I never listened to because I wasn't even listening to my voicemail. One day I went through, she goes, hello, Marco. I started crying. It just happened this last month. And I just, I go, save. Hear my mom's voice for one more time. But there's going to be a day I see her in heaven. And right now I'm working to reach as many people as I can for Jesus. And if you give your life to Jesus, I guarantee you this, this is a good life. And who could give their life to Jesus? Any one of you. Any one of us. Jesus did not come for a whole bunch of goody two-shoes people. He came for some sinners like me and you that have messed up and we're empty on the side. Some of us right now are, are dead men walking. Like in the si inside you feel dead. But I got good news for you. God did not bring you here to bury you. He, bring you, he brought you here to, to resurrect you help you become everything that you were created to be. You are not an accident. God has a purpose for your life. And the only way to live is following Jesus. The Bible says, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I'm the life. And if you follow me, only way is to follow me. Through me, you'll get to the Father. Through me, you'll get to heaven. Religion can't get you there. Your good works can get you there. But your faith in Jesus can get you there. So how do you give your life to Jesus? It's a choice. You finally got to be saying, man, I'm tired of living by my own rules, my own ways. I'm tired of being out of control. Something has to change. Emotionally, I need healing. I've gone through so much. And some of you, it's a miracle that you're here today because you've gone through so much pain, suffering and abuse. And, I mean, just abandonment. You've gone through it all and you're here. And God's saying, I brought you here to heal you and turn all that mess into a good story. It's going to end well. It's going to be a happy ending if you give your life to Jesus. Today is the day to begin your growth season, your growth life, to become everything that God created you to be, but that's also a choice. You'll never grow spiritual until you make up your mind to follow Jesus. The Bible says from apart from him, you can do nothing spiritually. You can't grow. It's like a vine that, that's like a branch disconnected from the vine. Today, God is saying, connect yourself to me and I'll give life to you. I'll give you your dreams back. I'll give you your purpose back. I'll forgive you of every one of your sins. And it doesn't matter what you've messed up. I am a God that can restore the lost years and broken years. And I can do what you can't do, but it's a choice. So I'm going to give you a, a simple opportunity. Greatest opportunity of your life to get Give your life to Jesus and be prepared and make a decision. Start growing spiritually. If today you're in this place and you're like Larry, let's say you were Larry and, and today were your last day on this earth and tomorrow's not guaranteed, are you sure where you'd spend eternity? Are you sure you're prepared? Are you sure you're ready? Are you sure you'd go to heaven? Are you sure you're saved? Are you sure you're forgiven? Are you sure you have a relationship with Jesus? And you say, Pastor, I don't know. I don't know. It's okay not to know. But you don't have to stay in the not knowing. You can change your not knowing to knowing by saying, yes, Jesus. Jesus is knocking at your heart's door, and he's ready to come into your life with his spirit. He'll forgive you of every one of your sins. You come with your addiction. You come with your pain. You come with your mistakes. You come with your sin. And God is the one that changes your heart. But you got to be willing. I'm done doing it my way. I need a new start. I need a new beginning for me and my family. Something has to change today. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. You know, there was some yellow tape on my block. I mean, it was a crime scene. And I just found out this morning what it was. It was a 21-year-old girl that went to school with my daughter, Annalisa, 
and she died on that corner. I don't know what happened on that corner. I don't know if she got hit by a car, but who would ever thought that she had 21 years old on that corner on 30th, uh, 30th Street over here in San Bernardino that she would breathe her last breath on that corner. You just don't know. Today's your day for salvation. Give your life to Jesus. Say, Pastor, that's me. I want to, and some of you need to recommit your life to the Lord because you've not been utilizing your gifts for God. And you say, man, I need to recommit my whole life, including my gifts. I'm ready to start serving and living for God and growing in that area. It's time for me to grow. One, when I say three, I want you to raise your hands all this building and say, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to be forgiven of my sins. I want to receive the gift of eternal life. I want to recommit my life to the Lord. Two, and when I say three, I want you to raise your hands all over this building. Come on, be brave. It's time to be brave. This is the greatest decision you'll ever make. Give your life to Jesus. Today's the day to change, and nothing happens if you don't intentionally make a decision. One, two, three. Raise your hands all over this building. That's me. Proud of you. Proud of you. Hallelujah. See that hand over there. Proud of you. Proud of you. Yes, yes, yes. Anybody over here? Yes, I can see that. Way in the back, I see those hands over there. Proud of you. Awesome. We're going to pray, church. I want those that raise their hands do me one big favor. It's time to take action. It's time to leave your old life in those seats and start a new life following Jesus. So I'm going to ask you to do something. Will you give me the honor and privilege to pray with you? I want you to leave your seat. If you raise your hand, even if you didn't, you're saying, I need to change. I want you to come up here right now. And we're just going to do a quick prayer. But this prayer... It's, it's going to signify you surrendering your life to the Lord. Ask your neighbor. You want to go up there? I'll go up there with you. There's somebody right now that their new life is beginning now. It's going to be a life of increase, not decrease. It starts now. Come on, let's give them a hand. Someone's being forgiven. Someone's being set free. Someone's being restored. It's a new beginning. Someone's making a choice as God has been leading you. God did not bring you here to tease you. He brought you here to restore your life, to set you free, to give you eternal life. Today's your day of salvation. Come on, let's give him a hand. You online, stand up right where you're at. Give your life to Jesus. Stop your car. Give your life to Jesus. Proud of you. What's your name? Nice to meet you, Donnell. Donnell's giving his life to Jesus. God bless you, bro. God bless you. David, David, awesome. David surrendering his life to Jesus. Come on, let's give him a hand. Awesome, awesome. What's your name? Mariah, proud of you, mama. She, Mariah's giving her life to Jesus. Come on, that's someone's daughter. Come on, come on. There's someone's mama up here. There's someone's son up here. It takes a real man to give their life to Jesus. We're going to pray. And as you say this prayer, Jesus is going to forgive you. You're going to forgive yourself. God's going to fill you with the Spirit and baptize you with the Spirit so you could do what you couldn't do. He's going to heal your broken heart. He's going to give you a purpose. But you're making a decision. I'm going to follow Jesus and I'm going to grow. You know what that means? You got to follow through. We have classes for you. This Wednesday, I'm going to be speaking again on Wednesday night. Sir, I've spoken on Wednesday nights forever. I'm, Something crazy is happening in an hour. I'm going to be speaking in Spanish. So if you want to be, hear me preach in Spanish, it's a miracle that I can even do it. I'm telling you, it's a miracle. I don't talk Spanish ever. But, but uh, it'll happen an hour from now. Pray for me. <laughs> All right. I'm just, util what am I doing? Utilizing my gift so I can get better at speaking Spanish. Amen. I want to get better at speaking Spanish, preaching Spanish. Well, you better go do it. But I'm not very good at it. Don't worry about it. Just go do it. All right? Let's pray. Bow your heads. Close your eyes. Say this with me. Say, Jesus, I thank you for loving me so much that you suffered and you died on the cross and you rose from the dead to pay the price for the sins I committed. I was the one that should have died and suffered. But you took my place so that I could be forgiven. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I turn away and repent of my sins so I can follow you for the rest of my life. I open my heart 
Fill me now with your spirit. Jesus, come into my life. Set me free. Make me a new person. I thank you, Lord, that from this day forward, I'm going to grow in every area of my life. And people will see the good results of following you. And they'll become believers too. Thank you, Jesus. And devil, get out of my life. Get out of my mind. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord. I am free. I am saved. I'm born again. I have eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Stay right here. We want to pray with you. You need prayer? Come on up. We'd love to pray with you. If you're sick, come up here. We have time to pray. We'll pray for you. We're believing for your healing, for your breakthrough. We'll pray about everything. We love you guys. God bless you. Get your ticket while they last.